Hi guys, welcome to another Elvistory video. So once again, I'm going to be doing another reaction and review video. And this is about a video uh, called The Lost Elvis Home Movies, which was done in 1993. And um, I'm not going to be doing the entire video that uh, was originally made. I'm going to be doing a part of it because it's a, a nice story that I liked uh, the most out of it. And it's a story about um, Elvis meeting this DJ in Texas named Eddie Fidel, who uh, worked at KRLD Radio. And what happened was um, Elvis was promoting his music, so he went to Eddie's radio station they met, and this was in February of 56. And then Eddie saw Elvis at the Heart of Texas Coliseum uh, months later in October of 56. And he went backstage and met Elvis. And uh, he's like, do you remember me? You know, you promoted your music on my station. Elvis was like, yeah, of course. You know, I remember you. So they got to talking and, you know, kind of hit it off a bit. And um, Eddie turned around and said to Elvis, you know, uh, Whenever you're in town, you know, he just kind of extended himself to Elvis. He said, whenever you're in town, if you want to come by or, you know, if you want to come to my house and uh, just hang out, just just to get away from things, you know, uh, we'll cook you dinner. If you want to just come and hang around, you can hang around. And so Elvis took him up on this. And now the, um, there's two time periods in this video. Uh, one was from 1956, I think, following that meeting with Eddie and Elvis. Uh, not too long after they met is when this video was done. Um, part of it's from 1956, but the bulk of it was from 1958 when Elvis went into the army. Um, now, like I said, Eddie lived in Texas and Elvis got stationed in Fort Hood in 58 and so what he would do is you know he would go to eddie's house on like the weekends or whatever whenever he had time away from his basic training he would go over to eddie's house and i mean he had a house i believe he rented a house elvis in colleen texas but on the weekends he would go to eddie fidel's house to hang out with him and his family and both um, the Presleys and the Fidels, they, they became really, really close. Um, and, it, and it stayed that way for, for a long, long time. And, you know, Eddie and Elvis actually, you know, they really became good friends. And, and when Gladys passed away, uh, Eddie would go to, uh, he went to Graceland and stayed with Elvis for like a month and a half just to make sure he was all right. And, uh, you know, to help him with things, really, too. And so I just thought this was a nice story. This story is narrated now by uh, Eddie Fidel's daughter, Janice Fidel. And Eddie's son, Dana, is also in it. And he's in a couple of scenes where he talks about when Elvis would come visit them and when he was in the army and stuff like that. And one thing I also wanted to mention, um, now, in this video... You'll notice, um, you'll see Anita Wood. Now, when I saw this video, because to be honest with you, I had another video I was going to do before this one. And now, uh, we just lost. Now, I'm, I'm filming this video on July 7, 2023. We just lost Anita Wood like eight days ago. So when I saw this video and I saw Anita Wood in it, I, I was like, I think I better put this video up first because it would be a nice way also uh, to pay tribute to Anita Wood because she, you know, she was a beautiful person inside and out, you know, and she, she makes um, a lot of cameos in this video. You see her a lot because she was with Elvis when he was in basic training, like all the time. So she would go to Eddie's house with uh, Elvis and his parents, and I think Lamar Fike also was there, George Klein. 
but yeah, she was in this, she's in this video a lot. So I thought it would be actually, uh, not only is this a nice video about Elvis's friendship with Eddie Fidel, also I think this would be, an, this was going to be a nice way to pay tribute to Anita as well. So, all right guys, uh, without any further delay, um, I will take you to uh, the reaction and review video of the Lost Elvis Home Movies. Okay, so I will see you guys there in a couple seconds. Okay guys, so once again, this is the Lost Elvis Home Movies uh, reaction and review and as I stated before, uh, all this video recording was done at uh, DJ Eddie Fadell's home in uh, Waco, Texas. All right, guys. So, and it's also it's narrated by uh, Eddie's daughter, Janice. My father met Elvis in February of 1956 when he was working as a disc jockey at KRLD radio station in Dallas. Elvis had come to the station to promote some of his records and they made an acquaintance and visited for a few minutes. Daddy reacquainted himself with Elvis a few months later here in Waco, Texas in October of 1956 when Elvis played a concert at the Heart of Texas Coliseum. After the show, my dad was just so excited. He had seen Elvis's performance. He couldn't believe how great he was. And he went backstage to meet him. And he said, do you remember me? I'm the disc jockey that worked in Dallas and you came up to promote your records. And lo and behold, Elvis had remembered him. And so they visited for a little while. My father was always very generous to strangers and especially being impressed with Elvis. And he said you know, to him, just kind of off the cuff, come visit me sometime in my home. I'd love to have you. My wife would cook for you. We'd love to have you in our family. You know, just next time you're around, come to town. We'd like to uh, show you around. And it was just a standing offer. And after that, in 1958, when Elvis became stationed at Colleen, Texas, just a few miles from Waco, uh, when he was in the Army, he did just that. He would come visit our family on the weekends and just show up unexpectedly. He would never call first. He would just <laughs> drop in. And it was always very exciting for us. He would bring his friends, his entourage, his girlfriend at the time, Anita Wood. And they would just pull up in several cars in front of our home and pile in the house. And my mother, who you know would be running around in her robe and her house shoes or whatever, <laughs> would suddenly run and go back and put a dress on and start cooking. And it was always very exciting. It was a lot of fun. Um, there was never a dull moment at that time. Also at that time, it, the word got out that Elvis Presley was staying at our home sometime, and so our phone number was unlisted after that so that people couldn't call us at all hours of the day asking if Elvis was there. And we would just look out the window at times and there would be teenagers standing across the street just staring <laughs> at our house, or a big mob of teenagers would come up to our house demanding to see Elvis when they thought he was there. So we felt like we were on stage a lot of the time, and we also felt that we were there to protect Elvis and keep the elements away from him uh, that made him so nervous at times, unless he wanted to go out and sign autographs, and then we would be right at his side. So it was a very exciting time um, in his early career. Hmm. When Elvis would come visit and listen to the new records that my father had bought for him, he would sometimes fix on one record, and he would play it over and over and over to almost to the point of just saying, please turn it off, we've had enough. You know? <laughs> and one of the records that he liked at the time was called Happy Birthday Baby. And he sat down at our piano one day, at my piano, I mean, rephrase that, and played that song 
and he and Anita and my father sang it and they just had a ball. Elvis loved that song and he played it over and over with uh, my dad and Anita providing harmonies and he would change up the song a little bit to make it sound different and he loved to do that and daddy was able to uh, actually get him on tape singing that which is great and we got home movies of him playing our piano sitting in our living room <laughs> wow. uh, at our house in Lasker and that How was just cool. great. I mean there were people there um, having a good time. My brother and I were there as little children and Elvis was just having a good time. He would um, uh, he loved to eat little sweet pickles and yeah. he was eating some sweet pickles and at the same time kissing me on the cheek yeah. and I'll just never forget that it was really um, um, interesting you know the smell of the sweet pickles Elvis and these bright lights shining on my face as a little child it was really funny and um, so we got some of these things on tape some of these really nice shots we have pictures of Elvis uh, movies of Elvis sitting <laughs> in the pink and black den that my father built for him and in one of those shots he's smoking a cigar and that was another thing that my father always had for him in the room um, daddy had a little glass cigarette box <laughs> that everybody used to in the 50s I guess they kept them on their coffee tables and they would be full of cigarettes well daddy would put Elvis's cigars in there and no one would smoke them until Elvis came <laughs> and he always enjoyed that special touch that we had there for him in our house wow. There was a story, too, about my folks were just sitting around the, the dinner table one afternoon, after lunch, I believe, and Mother had a pot of beans on the stove that she was preparing for dinner that night. And a knock comes on the back door, and they open it up, and there's Elvis and his mom and dad and yeah. Anita. And they were on their way from Fort Hood to Fort Worth to see a movie. And my folks were just shocked you know here they all were together they just showed up on their doorstep <laughs> and they walked in and they made them at home you know made them feel at home as usual and daddy asked if any of them were hungry and Elvis was on kind of an unusual schedule you know he would sleep all day most of the time and, and be awake in the night so I think he had just gotten up maybe an hour before that and he was hungry and um, so daddy said can can we go to the store we'll get you a steak we'll get you whatever you want you know just tell us what whatever you want and we'll go get it and he said, well, uh, what's in that pot over there on the stove? And I just wanted to stop this for a minute. Now, <clears throat> how you guys can tell which video clips are from 58 and from 56, if you look right here, um, number one, Elvis ain't, uh, is not in uniform. Number two, his hair is, uh, I want to say much longer, but it's longer than uh, what it was when he was in uh, the military. So that's how you can distinguish uh, which clips are from 1956 and which clips are from 1958. That was the beans that my mom was cooking and she kind of sheepishly said, well, I'm, I'm cooking some beans for dinner. They're just some pinto beans. And he walked over to the stove and he pulled up the lid of the pan and he looked in there and he goes, oh, that smells good. Can I have some of those? And she said, sure you can you know so she served up beans for the whole group of them and um, they visited they ate and then a couple hours later they were back on the highway going to Fort Worth to their movie so I thought that was a really interesting sweet story when Elvis was at Fort Hood and he started coming to our home more often my dad decided to turn a little portico that we had on the side of our house into a den or a stereo room and so that's what he did and he decorated it in Elvis's favorite colors because he wanted it to be Elvis's little den and room and you know whenever he would come visit and so daddy put black and white carpeting kind of a speckledy looking um, carpet on the floor and there were bookshelves in there along one wall and they were painted in Elvis's favorite colors at the time which were pink and black mm. and daddy bought glasses and uh, you know drink glasses and iced tea glasses and things that were in those colors we had it the whole thing decorated uh, daddy even bought a stereo it was a hi-fi stereo uh, what we used to call a, a hi-fi and it was black lacquer real shiny black that matched the shelves in the in the room and so he put that in there and every time Elvis would come daddy would have the latest 45 singles out so that Elvis could sit and enjoy them Elvis loved to listen to all the latest music it inspired him 
Uh, he, he loved to hear the new artists and just had a ball with it. He loved singing all the songs that were out that were popular. He would do anything but his own songs. Um, yeah. I think he was maybe a little, I don't know what the word would be, maybe um, sheepish about performing them outside of the, the stage setting. So That's one thing always with Elvis that I've always heard through the years from like uh, his family and friends is that when Elvis uh, would listen to music, he would never listen to himself. He never wanted to listen to any of his own records. So what she's saying is 100% true. He liked to perform other people's music when he was at our home. Elvis uh, loved this room. This was his room. Uh, my dad built it for him, and uh, this is where he stayed. He uh, played music in here. Uh, we partied in here. I can, can remember all the excitement. I've never experienced any excitement <laughs> quite like the times when Elvis was coming here. His uh, girlfriend at the time was uh, Anita Wood, and uh, I thought she was an angel. She looked just like I would think an angel would look. Wow, and she's beautiful. Elvis, uh, I can't say anything about him other than that he was some being on a uh, far off uh, planet almost. So, so great was his uh, presence. Uh, it's, it's magic being here. Uh, it was just a wonderful experience. I didn't fully comprehend it, of course, but uh, it was a very special experience just being here with Elvis and friends and family. Yeah. My father also bought a piano, which was actually my piano. It was bought for me. But after Elvis played it and Elvis touched it, it was really no longer my piano. After that, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I wasn't. I, I couldn't have the piano anymore. It became Elvis's piano. So um, I, I was a little mad about that. But <laughs> I do have it now, so I guess I'll spare. <laughs> that didn't spare. Oh, wow, look at that. When Anita would come visit with Elvis, I was only five years old at the time, and she was so beautiful and so glamorous. She had the blonde hair. She would always wear the most beautiful, sexy clothes, and wow. I was so enamored with her. And I would do anything to get Anita's attention. I, I liked Elvis, but Anita was really my idol. And I would do anything to get her attention, and I remember one day, I finally, after it seemed like hours to me of trying to persuade her to come outside and look at something, she finally came outside with me to our patio. And I really don't even remember now what I was showing her. Maybe it was a drawing on the sidewalk that I had made, or maybe I wanted her to teach me how to play hopscotch. I, I really don't recall. But I do recall that she did come outside and gave me her full attention while I talked to her and told her or showed her whatever it was I wanted to show her. And I was so impressed by that. And I always oh held it. I, I mean, you guys, uh, you watched this video with Anita Wood in it. I don't mean to take away from the story of the friendship of Eddie and Elvis, but, you know, if you look at Anita, you realize just how stunningly, stunningly beautiful she really was. I mean, I don't have to tell you guys that, but I just wanted to point that out. Anita in just admiration because she was such a nice lady. I was two years old when Elvis was coming to our house here, where we sit here in, in Waco, Texas. This is the room that uh, was built for Elvis. I, I can remember Elvis calling me Ready Kilowatt. Uh, it's strange that after 39 years I can still remember that, but uh, there was such an excitement in the air, such a, an energy level when Elvis would come to the house, uh, that remembrance has never left me. I can, uh, I can almost recreate it uh, to this day. Mm -hmm. um, Elvis uh, was fascinated with my fascination with light bulbs <laughs> and light in general, and uh, <laughs> it's the name Ready Kilowatt. Uh, uh, he referred to me always as Ready Kilowatt. He was never Dana, always Ready Kilowatt. <laughs> When Elvis would visit our home, he would always come to the back door because he felt like he was one of the family. One Sunday afternoon, I can remember standing near a window at the back of our house, right behind our back door, 
Uh, my brother Dana and I had a little table there that we used to sit <laughs> at and color pictures and we would sit there for hours and draw and color and read. And I was sitting there one day and I looked up, up out the window and there came a huge black limousine or a Cadillac. I'm not sure exactly what it was, just a huge black car pulled up to the side of our house near our back. And I ran screaming through the house. I just hopped up out of the chair and ran screaming, Elvis is here, Elvis is here. And it was true, about three or four cars pulled up behind him and a whole group of people came up um, and visited us for the rest of the day. But I will never forget that. And it was so funny because every Sunday afternoon after that, for several weeks, I would sit by that window and just look out the window to see if a black car pulled up. We never knew who Elvis was going to bring over to our home. Sometime it would be army buddies with their girlfriends or their wives. It could be his entourage, it could be his family, it could be his cousins, just anyone. It was always a surprise. Daddy was able to get some of these people captured on film. Uh, back then there was no narration to the movies, there was no sound. And if you look closely, um, well right there is you guys could probably tell that's George Klein, Elvis's longtime friend since high school. And I think Lamar Fike is actually sitting uh, right across from George diagonally. So years later, Daddy went back and there. Yep, that's Lamar Fike right there. <laughs> Rated some of the films so that we do know now who some of the people were in the movies. Um, in one shot, we've got Elvis uh, visiting with Anita. And at that time, he brought another couple with him, a man in an army uniform and his wife or his girlfriend. And it was funny because Elvis felt self-conscious when Daddy would put the camera on him. <laughs> Since he didn't have a script with lines that he'd learned to, to say, he was just being himself. And he would always feel a little self-conscious and maybe make a wisecrack or two or, <laughs> you know, get the camera off of me sort of thing. <laughs> so Daddy knew this. And to try to make Elvis more comfortable and to make his friends more comfortable, Daddy would put the camera on the other people in the room. And as a result, he actually got more footage of Elvis's friends than he did of Elvis. He didn't want the friends to feel left out and uh, he didn't want Elvis to feel uncomfortable. So being a true friend, he did what he thought was best. And even though he really wanted more footage of Elvis, he shot pictures of Elvis's friends. So we have a lot of that on our home movies too. And uh, it was good that Daddy did have time to go back in later years and narrate some of this. So that we would know a little bit more about what was going on. Gladys, Elvis's mother, when she would come visit with Elvis, would often go with my mother to the grocery store so that they could pick out Elvis's favorite foods. And one of his favorite foods was bacon and he would eat a whole pound of bacon all by himself, but it couldn't be undercooked. It had to be burnt. Uh, and so that's the way Gladys showed my mother how to, how to cook this bacon for Elvis. And that's the way mother would serve it to him. And uh, no one else would eat it. When Elvis's entourage was there, they had to have steaks and, and more exotic, expensive foods, but Elvis was very basic. He liked country cooking, cornbread, and banana sandwiches, he loved those. Daddy called my Uncle Louie and asked him if he could bring Elvis over, if Louie could get the family together, and if they could have a barbecue and a, a picnic out on their big patio that they had. And Louie was just beside himself. He was so excited. He called up the family. They got it set up for about a week later. And I'll never forget that party. It was just wonderful. Everyone had such a good time. Uh, they had music playing out on the patio. I don't know how they did it. They must have brought their stereo outside. And Elvis danced with all my cousins. He signed autographs. He just had a wonderful day. They made hamburgers, which was another one of his favorite foods, which he really enjoyed. And he just became a part of our family. Everyone enjoyed being there with him. And yeah. even as a child, I can remember what a wonderful atmosphere it was and how happy everybody was and what a good time Elvis had. And, my father was happy, you know, that he could do that for Elvis. So it was just wow. a great time and a great party, and it's one of those things I'll never forget. Nice picture. Elvis, as you know, was very close to his mother, Gladys, and when she passed away, that was very devastating for him. And my father sent a telegram consoling him after her death, 
And he also went to Graceland and spent about six weeks up there with Elvis at that time. When my grandmother passed away, my father's mother, Elvis had met her a few times at, the, at our house, and uh, he always was very respectful towards her. And when she passed away, Elvis was, was devastated and very sad for my father because mm. he had recently lost his mother. Of course. And he sent us a telegram uh, to console us after her death, too. And I thought that was very sweet and, and very um, kind of Elvis to do that. That was Elvis for you. Elvis liked Roy Orbison's music. And one time, Roy Orbison was coming very close to our uh, town of Waco to uh, perform in Temple, which is about 30 miles from here. And so my dad, knowing that Elvis thought Roy Orbison was really good, told my mom, we, we should go see this guy sing. It was in the very early days of Roy Orbison's career. So we loaded us all up and we went to Temple and we saw Roy Orbison's concert that he did there and he was of course wonderful. And after the show my father went up to him and introduced himself and uh, told him he knew Elvis Presley and so they talked for a little while and Roy Orbison said, well you know Eddie, um, I was just getting ready to go eat. Why don't you and your family join us? And Roy I think was with his cousin and his father at the time. And so all of us went over to uh, the Golden Dragon, I think was the name of it. It was a um, real famous Chinese restaurant there in Temple. And we went and ate together with Roy Orbison, and they talked about Elvis and show business and all the new music coming out. Uh, and that was a really nice memory, too. Very cool. This is Elvis's star cap that he's wearing in photos that we have of him. He's also sitting in front of it in one of our home movies um, because the picture of him wearing the hat is right behind him. He bought these hats, I think he bought a few of them for his friends and entourage. Oh wow. And, uh, he bought these in Dallas and this was Elvis's own hat that he gave to my father to keep. Wow. This is a copy of Elvis's personal appearance contract. It's dated October the 12th, 1956. This is a contract for a performance that Elvis did at, the, at Waco's Heart of Texas Coliseum, and this is where my father met Elvis. Okay guys, the rest is just uh, closing credits, so I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to do uh, my review. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed um, the Lost Elvis Home movies uh, from 1993 and uh, basically the story about um, Elvis befriending Eddie <clears throat> excuse me, Eddie Fidel and his family. Um, I thought it was a really nice story of just how uh, Eddie's really just um, opening up his home and his life to Elvis really, you know, forged a really good friendship between him and Elvis and also Elvis's parents. And it, it was so obvious to me during that time there that Elvis was just, you know, he was so relaxed and, you know, he was able just to, you know, unwind and, and just be himself, really, you know, without, I mean, Eddie had the home video camera, but it's not like a movie camera or anything or, you know, or uh, the press or anything like that. It was just it was just a, a nice uh, home environment for him, which is something, you know, being in the military that, you know, he was probably, you know, craving at the time, you know, just to be around family and friends and just having a good time. So in that way, I thought this was really uh, a nice thing to watch. And not only that, like I mentioned, um, having uh, Anita in this video, Anita Wood, um, I think it was a nice way also for me to kind of pay tribute to her in a certain way and uh, because I thought it was just ironic that I came upon this video that I haven't seen in a long time only a week after she passed away so 
uh, upon seeing that, you know, I figured, you know, this would probably be a good idea, be a good idea to put this up now, you know, because I did, like I said, I did have another video planned that I was going to put up, but I will probably put it up uh, following this video. But um, I thought for that reason, I thought it would be a good idea to put that video up now, you know, this way. Because when you look around, there's really um, not that many, like, uh, videos, really, that have a need in them that, you know, you really, you know, get to see just how beautiful she really was. I mean, when you, I mentioned it in the video, when you stop and look, she was just stunning. I mean, it, it's so easy to see why Elvis would fall in love with her. And... You know, as we all know, he, he was, he was very much in love with her, you know. Um, but what happened down the road happened down the road. Sometimes things just aren't meant to be, you know. But, um, now, the thing is, um, that house, um, that's actually that house that Elvis would go to at uh, Eddie Fidel's house in Waco, Texas. That's now an Airbnb. You could actually go there. And um, Eddie's daughter Janice, who narrated this video, uh, re uh, decorated like the inside of the house with pictures of Elvis being there and stuff like that. So you could actually go there now if you're ever near Waco, Texas, or if you live in Waco, Texas, or if you live around Waco, Texas, whatever the case, you can go there and you could actually sleep over for 150 uh per night or something like that um if you guys wanted to look into it if you're in texas you're around waco like i said uh i believe it is about 150 a night that you can spend there and from what the reviews that i've i because i read reviews about it um everybody that stayed there so far they said it was just a wonderful experience and eddie's daughter janice is just so uh nice and friendly and she, and she makes sure everything is good and you know nice and uh she really does accommodate anybody that stays there and and i think it's a really nice thing because it's a piece of history really it's it, it's a nice piece of history that you can go experience so i mean if you guys wanted to look up the address of where this is uh if you're in the uh, waco area or whatever or you're going to be there whatever the case um the address to that house is 2807 Lasker Avenue, L-A-S-K-E-R Avenue, Waco, Texas, 76707. So if you guys are ever around that area or if you live there, like I said, um, I know if, if I was, I would love to sleep over in a house that Elvis used to consider a home away from home really while he was uh at basic training so all right guys i that's that does it for my reaction and my review of this video like i said i hope uh i believe this is available also um i don't know if it's still for sale you guys can look on google or whatever uh it's called the lost elvis home movies um if there was any choppiness during that video, I apologize for that. There seemed to be some uh, little choppiness here and there, but I don't know if it really affected the video that much. I have to go back and check. But um, if there is any while you guys are watching, I apologize for it. But uh, like I was going to say, the Lost Elvis Home Movies, which was done in 1993, I'm pretty sure is available uh, for sale. You can try looking on Google, on Amazon. And uh, this way you can own a copy of it. All right. So, okay, guys, that, that'll do it for this uh, reaction and review. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this like I did. I just thought it was just like a really nice story, you know. So, okay. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. Uh, if you like this video, when you get done, hit that like button. It really, really helps me out. And also, if you're not getting notifications when I put up videos, just go into your subscriptions on uh, your phone next to my channel. Tap the bell, and you'll be notified every time I put up a video. All right? 
I hope everybody's doing great. Thanks again for watching, and as always, TCB, and God bless.